Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth I was one which divided a nation. England was in a significant amount of turmoil following the changes made to the country and religion as Bloody Mary I put her stamp on history. But Elizabeth I came onto the throne at the age of 25 following the death of her half-sister, but she was a woman who believed she would never become queen. Elizabeth was the youngest daughter of King Henry VIII and the real hope for the Tudor dynasty was her younger brother, Edward VI, Henry's immediate successor. But following his early death and then the death of Mary, Elizabeth was given the throne. She would become the queen who was the best Tudor monarch of all, but she was the final Tudor monarch crowned. As mentioned, the Tudor period was a huge era of change and Elizabeth I was a Protestant who had conformed to her Catholic sister Mary I. But Elizabeth was even imprisoned by Mary at some point inside the Tower of London. She was considered a threat to her reign. But Mary became ill in the May of 1558 and she then, in the following months, recognised her half-sister Elizabeth as the heir presumptive. But then nine days after signing the paperwork around this, Mary I died following a painful illness. Elizabeth at the time was in Hatfield House in north of London, where she learned of her half-sister's death and the fact she was now the Queen. She succeeded onto the throne on the day of Mary's death, and her first state paper was a memorandum for the appointment of the commissioners for the coronation, with five people being placed in charge to plan the coronation. Sir Richard Sackville was the head of this force that planned and the debate came to make the coronation occur on Sunday the 15th of January 1559. It was believed not accepted though at the time as it took place on a Sunday, a Christian holy day. However, Elizabeth proposed this date as her astrologer, John Dee, said that the stars and planets would be aligned in good position on this day, giving her good luck. However, the fact there were months before the coronation did not help Elizabeth I, as there were many who were questioning her position as queen, and many claimed she was actually not a legitimate queen. This was because her mother was Anne Boleyn, a woman who was executed on the orders of her husband. Elizabeth's father, Henry VIII, but Elizabeth had also at one point been removed and barred from the Act of Succession, being labelled illegitimate, but the Third Succession Act restored her in the place of succession, but it did not confirm her legitimacy. Also, Catholics across the country wanted Mary, Queen of Scots, to become the new Queen, and not the Protestant Elizabeth, and Mary would be a constant source of threat throughout Elizabeth's time on the throne, until she signed Mary's death warrant. Elizabeth spoke to some prominent politicians about the problems she faced, and she consulted the Lord Keeper of the Great Seal, Nicholas Bacon, and he said that following her coronation, Elizabeth's right to rule would be confirmed, as the English laws have been long since pronounced that the crown once worn quite taketh away all defects whatsoever. The coronation events were to be made up of four elements. The first would be a vigil procession to the Tower of London, where Elizabeth would spend a night or two before her coronation. Then there would be, on the day of coronation, the royal procession through the streets of London to the Palace of Westminster. Then the coronation service would take place in Westminster Abbey, followed by the large coronation banquet inside of Westminster Hall. The religious ceremony was the main element inside of the Abbey, but Elizabeth knew that the huge procession would amaze her people of the country and that her subjects would, through this, accept her. The Queen spent £16,000 of her own money on the coronation and many others contributed huge amounts, but foreign merchants were banned from contributing, showing that the coronation would be a purely English display of royalty. Elizabeth, to begin with, wasn't sure on which bishop should conduct the royal service, as the Archbishop of Canterbury was expected. But Reginald Pole had died 12 hours after Mary I died. There wasn't anyone in this position yet, and the Archbishop of York was deemed not willing to do this, as he was a Catholic, and he declined to officiate the proceedings. 
Edmund Bonner, the Bishop of London, was also seen as unsuitable, as he had been burning Protestants in the capital, and also the Bishop of Winchester was under house arrest. Many other bishops refused the offer, and the Bishop of Carlisle then accepted the role. Elizabeth's coronation and the etiquette for it was laid out in a book made for Richard II's coronation, and the vigil procession took place first. On the 12th of January, the procession was on the River Thames, and it went from Whitehall Palace to the Tower of London. The river was filled with ships, galleys and other vessels, and it was a very impressive sight. The Queen and members of her household were on the Royal Barge, which was covered in tapestries, and was towed by a group of men, who also played music, to the delight of the onlookers. The procession went under the arches of London Bridge and approached the Tower of London, where a gun salute was fired. On the 14th of January, Elizabeth then began her procession from the Tower through the City of London to the Palace of Westminster. It was said that it snowed a little, and the route was lined with wooden barriers which held the crowds back, and the roads had sand and gravel scattered over them to help the horses. The horses were decorated heavily and the Queen was carried in a huge carriage, decorated with cloth of gold. The procession was huge and large, with high-ranking members of the military and royal henchmen, but along the route there were eleven triumphal arches which had a different theme. One of them demonstrated the House of York and Lancaster, and Elizabeth was sat on top of this arch. Another huge act of pageantry took place near St Paul's Cathedral. The coronation then took place on the 15th of January. The abbey was greatly decorated and there was a huge number of people who were invited to come and watch. It was said that it was a traditional coronation and when the congregation were asked if they accepted Elizabeth as queen, they all shouted yes and there was a huge fanfare coming from the heralds following this. The coronation oath was the same as used at Edward VI coronation, but with a few changes. After this, the anointing and investing took place, along with the actual crowning of Elizabeth I. But the most debated part of the coronation was the coronation mass. It's not completely known what happened during this bit, as Elizabeth, during the mass, withdrew to the traverse, which was a curtained-off area behind the high altar. This allowed her to change her clothes, but then the Queen left the Abbey, beaming with smiles, and she spoke and greeted the crowd which had gathered, and the people were incredibly grateful for this. Following this, the coronation banquet took place, and Westminster Hall had been spectacularly decorated. There was a buffet on a raised platform with 150 gold and silver cups. The 200 guests were seated on four large tables, and the organisers of the feast rode around on horseback and began at 3pm. And the highlight was the entry for the Queen's champion, Sir Edward Dymoak in full armour, who issued a number of challenges. At 9pm the Queen left for Whitehall, but the joust which was planned for the next day was cancelled as the Queen was exhausted. At the time, Elizabeth's coronation attracted a lot more attention than others, probably due to the huge shift in religion and the detail that went into it. It was a coronation that endeared Elizabeth I into the hearts of the people of England, and it stood her in good stead for the rest of her reign. Elizabeth I was one of the greatest queens to ever rule over England, and she was greatly loved by her people, who took her into their hearts. She was a queen who would, along with the people of her nation, defeat the Spanish Armada, she was considered Gloriana, a queen who was incredibly glorious, and she put her nation before herself, often at times, refusing to marry, as she said she was married to her country. She had a huge sense of devotion to her subjects, but she was a queen who could also show off her brutal side, as she would order executions of high-profile people, including Mary, Queen of Scots, and some of her closest courtiers, she went on to become the monarch that Henry VIII dreamed Edward VI would be, but despite never having a child or heir, she is remembered fondly in the hearts of historians and the people of England, and is a beloved part of the nation's story, even 400 years after her death. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.